Hey coach, I'm so excited you found us. Make sure you subscribe down below and hit up above. We put new content out just about every day. Also, make sure you go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. If you want to put up balls like this, if you want to win, you want to learn the game, you want the roadmap to become a better basketball coach, teachhoops.com is the answer for you. It's a little bit of everything. It's mentoring, it's resources. Go over and check it out and have a great day. And it does get everybody moving. Okay, we'll split up from here. Give me um, the first three guys. I want you guys down in that corner over there. You three over here. Right corner over there. You guys are here. You got them. Give him the ball. Step off. You're up here. Okay? You're right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. On the outlet. Now, I love to watch transition. I think transition's a big part of our game. So, for the first half of practice, everything is up and down. If we've got the full court, I want to utilize it. I've watched coaches practice where they'll spend the first hour sitting in the half court. And that's great after a game. You got to do it. You got to do it. But if you're in your early part of your season, you're looking for things to do to get your team moving and get them going. This we call chase layups. These are better than putting two lines at half court and now making everybody make a layup. Boring, monotonous, and the kids just don't really get into it. Make it game-like. Practice as you play. Don't just go out there and send the kids through the motions because you're not getting anything out of them. Give me an outlet, give me a ball on the inside lane there. You okay? You all right? All right, great. You're right there. You're on the outlet. Great. Same thing we just did with the outlet, but here's the difference. Now the passer is going to lift the ball up and slightly out. So you're going to probably lob it. I'd say lob it right about here to me. Throw me a lob pass. Not bad. Not bad. Good. Good. Nice lob pass. You're going to sprint onto it and catch it. Catch it. Let me stress that again. Catch it. I've watched so many games lost because a player... Throw that up again. Just toss me that. A player wants to be cool and they'll... Catch it with one hand and bounce it. That's just dumb. And coaches don't stand for it. Make the player absolutely catch the ball. You're going to catch the ball, and you're going to take that on a sprint and make that layup. But there's a problem. See him? He's coming. He's coming. After he throws that ball, you got a little bit of a lead. He is going to run that middle lane, and he is chasing you. Now, one, stress to your players. No tracking down. We don't want anybody hurt. I don't need anybody buried. You're not going for anybody's spot. But we've got to simulate a game situation. You can't just play basketball slow and then expect in a game you're going to play fast. Practice it fast. Two-line layups work nice for warm-ups. Doesn't do it in practice. So you're going to throw that outlet up here. You're going to sprint onto it. And then you're going to run straight down that lane. You're looking for a tip or a block. We want a tip or a block on almost every play. And the ball handler, the shooter, the layup, you better get used to somebody chasing you because I don't know. I don't really know too many players, ball please, who are going to get the ball in an open court and transition and they're going to be able to You don't do that in a game. It looks pretty in practice. It might look nice in an NBA highlight film, but it's not happening. Some kid's coming down because his life's on the line, and his coach is not going to let him stay in the game if he's not on you. Defense. No stupid fouls. Okay? You got that. Lift it up. Here we go. Nice lob. Good. Catch it with two. Nice block. Good job. Nice block. Nice job. Good work. Good work. Good work. Now, the purpose here is to simulate a game situation. I love slides because I think it's great. After they've done some slides, I want players to attack the rim. Let's get it after it. Let's get to the rim. All right, we'll go one more. Just lift the pass up. It's nice to throw a toss, but put, the, put a little arc on it, lift it up a little bit. Here's why. In a game situation, the ball's not always going to be on a good toss. Your center, your forward, whoever gets the rebound down here, they're getting the ball out to where you're going. Catch it with two hands. Don't take it with one and try to get it on the bounce. 
All right, see if we can get him, defense. Lift it up, good. Toss it, catch it, good. To the rim. All right, good layup, nice job. See, now this is competitive. This is making guys make layups in a game situation. Not just letting them go through the motions and, oh yeah, now we're going to toss another one, we'll toss another one. Okay? Come on down, fellas. Come on down. Now, normally after this period, great, you guys are on the base. Normally after this period, beginning of the season, it's 20 minutes. It'll go 25, it'll go 30. I love working with the clock because the clock kind of keeps you going and it kind of keeps everybody fresh. You don't want to do something for 25 minutes. Most players don't have the attention span to stay with you for 25 minutes. You're lucky if you've got them for five minutes, let's be honest. You've got really good players, it's probably less. We'll run full court. We'll do a whole series of full court stuff. And you can add in your three-man weave. You can add in a five-man weave. You can do a host of things with it. After we've run that first half hour, I'm going to give them a break, but they've got to earn it. Now, I'm going to say the big guy right here is probably going to get fouled the most. So you're going to step up and you're going to get on that foul line. Everybody else will go on the baseline, put that ball down. I line one player up on the foul line. This is before we take a break. Not end of practice, before we take a break. Ice water sitting on the side, they're getting ready, they know they've been running for a half an hour, they're dead tired. Now they're tired, now you've got to make your free throw. See, anybody can make a free throw in the first quarter or the second quarter. I want players that can make that free throw in the fourth quarter after they've run for a half an hour. And now you've got your team standing down here and everybody's watching you and you know they're hot, they're sweaty, they're tired and if you don't make that layup they're not going to be happy with you. So you got to make two free throws right now. Otherwise they're running a full sprint. Nothing like pressure. I mean why would I make it easy? Anybody can hit a practice free throw. But now you got to hit your game free throw with everybody in the gym watching you. And once in a while, you got coaches just kind of yelling in your ear and talking junk. Hey, make, a, make two free throws. Here we go. Now, you just upset the entire team and everybody just had to run a sprint. Off. You won the sprint. All right, you won the sprint. You win the sprint, you get up and you shoot. Got to make two free throws. Everybody's watching you. There's going to be a lot of people watching you on this video. They want to see your free throw. Ah, see it makes a difference, it makes a difference. We'd run another sprint and then we get everybody, eventually we've got to get somebody to make two free throws. Who can win a sprint? Who can make a free throw? Good, come on. Yeah, I don't think you're making a free throw. Get up there, Sam. Purpose is to make sure everybody feels that pressure. All right, I'll pick a different player each day. After that, it's all about who can run the sprint. Thank you, sir. You've got to make two free throws. Make that second one. Got to be able to make them in a game situation. And if you can do it in practice, after you've run for a half an hour, then you can do it in a game. Then it becomes automatic. It's practicing the way you play. Not just for the sake of running out in practice. It's all about skill work. Now, once we've done that first half hour, we've made some free throws, we'll break it down and we'll go into player positions. I like to break down, go guards at one end, forwards at the other, give my assistant coaches a chance to get involved. If you're not going to let your assistant coaches coach, then you're wasting your time. You've got people, they're coaches, hopefully they're involved. Get them out, get them involved. You're going to take the guards, you're going to take the forwards, set up a couple of drills, give them a day's notice, let them come up with it. I like the clock because I'll go 10 minutes. You got guards for 10 minutes. Let's work on a screen series. Let's work on our closeouts. Post players, let's work on our position defense. Let's work on our post moves. And you want to get that involved. Break it down before you get into the half court stuff. Hey coach, so glad you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. Actually, if you did, subscribe and like, and then go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better.